Today I'm going to cover um, just doing the includes and libraries and linkers in Visual Studio for C++. Well, let's just start from the beginning. The first thing you want to do is you want to install Visual Studio. About, about Visual Studio, where's my thing? Here it is. So I'm using Visual Studio Community Edition 2017 version 15.95, blah, blah, blah. You, you basically just go Google Visual Studio and, and download the Community Edition. It's free. You don't, you don't, probably don't need me to walk you through that. But when you install it, it's going to ask you what development libraries you want. You got to check the C++ ones, of course. And if you want other ones, sure, check them. It takes, it takes a while. It connects to their server, it downloads and installs. Once you get it all set up and open it, uh, you'll see something a little like this and you'll probably do a new project. Um, but if you already got it installed, you know, for sake of saving a little time, I'm just going to click one of my projects, but I'll show you real quick. New project. You do probably empty Visual C++ empty. Hit OK. And I'll name it what you want first, then hit OK. I've already done that with, uh, say, this one called Ancient Archer, which is sort of a demo game engine I'm messing around with. Uh, not the point of this uh, particular video, uh, but I'm going to use it as an example. So I'm going to click on it. It's going to load it up, and you know we get our little environment. Uh, let's see. I'm going to show my little solution over here. Solution Explorer. Control Alt L brings this up. If you don't see it, also Control Semicolon brings it up and starts to search over here. If you don't see it, because you do kind of need to get over here and click on your top level, which is the name of your solution or project. And you right-click on this, and you go to Properties, and it brings up this. Oh, wait. Let me just say, for the sake of uh, saving people confusion and time, that there's like a gazillion different ways to get to this little thing right here. I don't know why. I don't know why they're using so much time. You can also go up to Project, Properties, while you have it selected. You can also go up to Build, Configuration Manager. No, it's a little different. All right. There's other ways. Debug. You can go up to debug, ancient architecture properties. Again, same thing. I don't know why they got it. There's probably like a more spots you can find in it too. Tools, options, is it here too? No, it's not. All right. That, that was one thing that kind of tripped me up for a while. I was like, wait, is this the same option? Why is it in so many different places? Right, anyway, it doesn't matter. Pick one of them. I like to go to project properties. But there's another thing. you got to make sure this is selected. I might have already said that because if you go here and then do it, you get properties for whatever folder you selected. So, another weird thing. All right, so let's go here. We'll right click on this, go to properties. And this is what I'm going to be talking about today is this little properties area. All right, there's three, I think, three main things I kind of want to cover here. And, uh, okay, so there's configuration for this project you're working on specifically. And that's under this VC directories. This is project specific stuff. Uh, there's this C++ one, C slash C++ one right below it. This is not project specific. This is for your install of Visual Studio for any C++ project you do. Uh, so it's kind of global in that way. Probably to your user account. I imagine it doesn't go over other user accounts. But anytime you do a C++ project, it's going to inherit these settings that you change here. And the last one I'm going to touch is linkers. And this is you know, just all about, if you know anything about C++, you'll know that you have to link libraries when you compile. So this area kind of is where you do that. So we'll start at the top. I'm not going to touch anything else. I'm only going to talk about the stuff that I've even even messed with at all. So, uh, well, just for sake of being able to demo this project, I'm going to switch to a working branch because uh, this one is not. Excuse me, give me a sec. Oh disregard this section. Where I'm at with this little demo engine is I'm trying to get model textures loading correctly so that I can kind of take the next step. Uh, but this branch doesn't really uh, work for demo purposes of showing you that all my linker stuff's working. So I'm going to switch to uh, I don't know, a branch that works. This one here is fine. So bear with me a second. Yeah, there we go. All right. 
So I'm going to hit play here. Close some of the stuff. I think it's building. Is it building? Yeah, it's building. So I'm just going to kind of show you the project as it is right now. Um, no particular reason other than for sake of example, I want to show it with the library is working and with the library is not working. Just to show that this is a valid way of setting up your stuff. All right, so here it is. What do we got? It's loading. Yeah, it's loading. It's really laggy on the video. Sorry about that. It's uh, quite smooth on my actual screen. I don't know why this comes through so laggy. It might be just that my laptop can't handle it all. But yeah, as you can see, it builds, it runs, it works, it links everything it needs. All right, so I usually make a, uh, in my project, I usually make an include folder, and a libraries folder. Sometimes I just call them ink and lib for short. But these are uh, specific to the project. And then, of course, I've got all this stuff acquired from my uh, little setup. And I've got the libraries to link when compiling. So uh, these are configured in, oh, let's go up here. So this libraries and include, these are configured in the one that I said is project specific. As you can see, it's right here. So I'll go look at these as an example. And as you can see, I'm using solutioner. Don't actually need the slash solutioner. Includes the slash. You want to use solutioner for these local ones because if someone else copies your project, the path is going to be different. And if you're using solutioner, it's going to automatically figure out the path. So it's solutioner, name your project, and then include if you got it on root level. I'm going to hit OK on that. Get it updated. Let me just double check. Yeah, it looks fine. It has an, an extra one in there, but uh, I'm not going to worry about that as long as it's got the right one. Might be inheriting that from somewhere else. Same with this one the libraries. Solutioner, name of the project, and then in there. So that tells it where to where to find the includes in the libraries. Now, uh, if you want it to always link to, to a place, maybe you have a place on your hard drive on this particular computer where all your libraries are, and for any particular project you use, you want it to point to that area, but you don't necessarily want all your development stuff to be included with your your code and your distribution, you just want to be able to compile on your computer. Uh, for example, I'll do a quick example. A lot of people do this. They'll have their local drive. They'll have a development section right on their, the root of their C drive. Um, I don't know. For example, I have this OpenGL where I have libraries and includes. So if I were doing the global ones through the C++, it would make sense to uh, put them to link it there. I don't have anything set here because I have it at project level. But if I did, it would be a good idea to to do it there, wherever it is. You know, get it all set up. Go there, go to includes, hit OK, and it would add it to it. I'm not going to do that since I'm doing it locally. But just an option, you can set them globally um, just so you don't have to do them for every project. So it's a matter of preference, and that's that's the difference there. It's, it is kind of nice in a way to get all your C++ set up so you never have to touch it again and it just works. Um, but also there's a benefit to do it at project level too if you're going to be distributing it or other people will use it. Uh, you just got to watch out because libraries are very version specific. I'm using all 32-bit libraries. If someone else has a mix of 32 and 64, it's not going to work. Um, that's, that's the example. And same with the includes, usually you build those, and they're for 32 or 64. I'm using all 32 on this particular project. You can't mix and match that stuff. you got to use either all 64 or all 32. And that goes, I'm going to close this to show you something real quick. So if you're using all 64, you got to go to 64 here. And, uh, you know, that's that's another thing to keep in mind. All right, so back into properties. Uh, the, yeah, the only thing we really want to touch here is the include. I think... I think you got to do the libraries on the project level. I don't think you can do them in the C++ one. And there's a lot of different options here for optimization, pre-processing, code generation. I didn't touch any of this 
you can touch some of this if you want. Uh, sometimes it can be helpful just depending on what you're doing. But I'm not concerned with it right now. Maybe I'll mess with it later. So the only one we're looking at is under general and includes here. All right. And very last thing, the linker. Now this is where this can be a little tricky. Wait, I have additional. Oh, okay. This is why it's in here twice. So under linker, under general, this is where you can do libraries. And I'm going to actually get rid of this because it's doubled up. Because it's already in the project level one right there. And just put it in linker too. Um, let's see, where was it? Under additional libraries. We'll just put it in there twice. So not needed. But what you really want to look at is input and additional dependencies. Now this is what you, you have to do this. Oh yeah, also, I should have mentioned this earlier. You want to make sure this is set right to up here. To whatever version you're doing. I'm doing 32, like I said. Uh, a lot of people switch this to all platforms and just do all the platforms at once. I'm not worried about that right now. Alright, so click the drop down on this additional inputs. or under linker, input, additional dependencies, I mean. And here's where you do all your link stuff for the compiler. Like if you're using OpenGL, you got to have this OpenGL32.live. If you're using GLF W3, you got to have this. So on with SDL, SDL main, SDL mixer, which means for sound. And I think, uh, see I'm using assimp here, but I don't actually have assimp in here yet. It's because this branch doesn't have assimp working at all. Um, if I switch back to my other branch, you'll see that I have assimp included in here too, which I started doing model loading. So, um, let's just hit play. I, I haven't really changed anything. I removed that one additional double linking, but as you can see, it still compiles. It's fine. Now, I'm just going to show you as an example real quick. I think I've covered most of the main stuff. I'm just going to do a few more examples and I'll call it a day on the video. So if you take these include directories and I don't know, just say, I want to copy it first. Copy. And then you can just get rid of it. Hit OK. It's no longer there. I'm still grabbing the include from somewhere. I don't know if that's from, I don't know, this might be from the linker or something. Somewhere it's still telling it, but it shouldn't be. That's a little weird, actually. So now if I go to my source and look at look at something that has some dependencies, yeah, these here. It's no longer confined GLM. And if I go to any of these, it's going to be like that. It's going to be like, oh, I can't find this. If I go to my sound, it's going to say, oh, I can't find this, can't find this. You know, it's, it's going to say that. It just means your includes aren't set up correctly. So you got to go in here. Go, go to your includes. And, and give it the old, uh, yeah, so you click this folder. You can click this and, like, navigate to it. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, believe me, you want the solution dir. You don't need this slash. I don't know why I keep getting that slash in there. Solution dir, name of your project, and then the include. And that, that will get to uh, the folder you're looking at there. All right, and now we'll go back in here. We'll see that it finds it now. And these libraries... Same way, but these are you'll only notice these at compile time. So, for example, let me just do the example. I go here, go here, and I'm going to remove this library that I'm pointing at. Oops, like get rid of the slash. Like me, I don't need the slash. You go ahead and copy this so I can paste it back in shortly. But right now, I'm just going to remove it. Hit OK, hit apply. Now I don't have it pointing to these libraries when I try to compile. I'm going to get all sorts of, uh, well, let's not talk about what just happened. Must have not removed it. No, it removed it. What? What's happening? Well, color me a fool. Yeah, I don't know how it's finding those. It shouldn't. That's actually kind of weird.
Maybe it's getting it from these additional dependencies. Or these additional libraries. Maybe it's set up in here. It's entirely possible I have the libraries link somewhere else. Maybe I have it somewhere in this C++. Here's all options. Let's look through all of them. Maybe I need to do, oh, I need to do a rebuild. I'm pretty sure everything's already built, so it doesn't need to link them again right now. So if I do a build rebuild, then it's going to delete all my objects, try to remake them, and probably have a bunch of errors. Come on, prove, prove me right. Don't make me a fool, Visual Studio. I'm a little confused about what's going on with the libraries if this just works. But I think overall I have explained most of the stuff. And uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, since I did a rebuild and I actually need to remake objects, it's going to start hitting uh, L and K, which means link. And that's the libraries, the linker libraries. Pretty sure that's what that means. Correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, okay, so that proves it. I was very confused there for a second. All right, so we add these back in. Add our little library path back in. A solution dir. Yada yada. There we go. Hit OK. Hit apply. Now we should be able to complete our build since we're now late. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I hope this uh, this video helps everybody out with uh, understanding how to to uh, do their includes in libraries for uh, Visual Studio with C++. Remember this one's local, so it's global, and you gotta configure your inputs. The other stuff's, as far as I know, pretty optional. So this will be, this is gonna be kind of the first tutorial on doing you know, C++ coding with Visual Studio. In the next one, I wanna go over how to build these libraries. A lot of these libraries I've included here, I've had to build them. And it's not particularly hard, but it can get take a little getting used to. And uh, I'll cover that in the next video. Don't forget to like if this video helped you. Subscribe to the channel for more stuff. And uh, hit me with a comment if you got any questions or if there's any certain thing you would like me to cover. And I'll see you in the next one. Keep coding and goodbye.